Hello everyone, today we are doing our makeup badly. Of course that word is subjective, it depends what you think bad makeup is, but I'm gonna do my makeup without really trying. I'm gonna get a few things wrong in my opinion and what we're gonna do is try and photoshop it amazing. I saw Brittany Balin do this. I'll link her video down below. It came up on like my recommended. I was like this video looks interesting and honestly I was just like hypnotized <laughs> and I really wanted to try it for myself. On my own Instagram I like to play with filters. I'll do a little bit of face tuning. Get rid of big pimples or marks or you know whatever. Example like what the frick is this? Oh, the lighting just changed. Speaking of lighting I'll adjust saturation, brightness, highlights, shadows, color balance just to get different effects. I'm not big into photoshopping my makeup though. Don't get me wrong, there are the most amazing Instagram makeup artists, but a lot of people also do Photoshop the absolute shit out of their makeup to make it way better than perhaps it looks in real life. Overusing those blur tools, depositing colors, changing colors altogether, adding friggin fake stuff just by painting it on Photoshop. So I'm gonna attempt to do that kind of stuff today just because it's a little bit of fun, it's a little bit of a challenge, and it's also just a little reminder to you guys that you shouldn't believe everything you see on social media, on Instagram, wherever, because you can manipulate literally any photo to make it look so different <laughs> to like the original. So that's what we're doing today. I hope you guys enjoy watching this, and if you do, don't forget to thumbs up, and if you hate it, feel free to thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe, if you are new here, I upload two to three videos every single week. Let's jump into it. I'm not even like using bad makeup products today. It's just going to be my technique. So I'm starting off with the Ola Henriksen Banana Brat Face Primer. I actually like love this face primer. I think it is bomb and it smells so good as well. So for my foundation color, I do have some fake tan on right now, but it's still developing. So it's not super dark. I'm going to try and do a really pale face. We are going to use the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer. This is another one of my favorite kind of higher coverage foundation formulas. This color is in the shade 0.5 Breeze. It's like way too pale for me. Usually I mix this shade with like other colors to make my perfect color. So hopefully it'll give us that pale effect we're going for today. I'm pretty sure this foundation is way too old too because it's kind of like separating a little bit. I probably have had this for like two years, three years in my collection. Might be time to get a fresh one. Not too worried about getting it in it to my eyebrows or anything today. Usually I would take a lot more care but We've got face tune, so who cares? Under my eyes, I'm using the Jeffree Star Concealer in the shade C2 because it is literally like Snow White. <laughs> I'm just blending that out really terribly with this brush. This brush does actually blend really well, but I'm doing it kind of terribly on purpose. Why does this foundation not look too pale for me when it really is? I think you're just going to have to take my word for it. Before we set our foundation, I'm going to go in with this contour wand by Charlotte Tilbury and just apply it with the actual sponge. Then just using that same brush to blend it out. Oh god, this is actually blending out way too nicely. <laughs> For press part, I'm going to use this Wet n Wild one in the shade Fair. It's one of my paler ones I have. And I'm just going to pat that all over. Alright, eyebrows. <laughs> I'm going to use this Brow Contour Pro by Benefit and this is in the shade Brown Light. And I'm going to do thick eyebrows with a pimple right here which kind of hurts to draw on top of so that's fun. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This is like how I used to do my eyebrows. Honestly, who is this girl? What's her number? On my eyes, we don't really have to worry too much about blending. I'm going to take my Me, Myself and Mitchell palette. I'm going to take the shade, let's do, blue. Let's do Mist. I'm gonna do a quick blend, but nothing too crazy. Cause I mean, we can Photoshop it. I mean, hopefully I've never actually tried to fix. I should have that looks like this before. Oh, I do look a little bit zombie-ish, so that's nice. <laughs> My skin tone is just like, I don't know what's happening. Trust me in real life, it's even worse. I look gray. Then let's take the shade Moody Mitch, which is this really deep blue. I'm taking out a brush that I have some pink on, cause Clearly we're not caring today. I don't really know yet if we're gonna do like an open eye selfie or if we're gonna do a little 
closed eye action. I'm going to take the shade Minty, which is like this greenish whitish color. And I'm going to apply it with my finger. I actually used this palette in a serious way in a video. I will link it down below if you want to go check it out. Because I was obsessed with the makeup I created. I think it was a full face first impression from memory. Even though I literally edited it yesterday, apparently I cannot remember. I'm not even joking. I have really bad short term memory. <laughs> is anyone else like that? I'm the kind of person where I don't remember people's names for like six times until like I've met them six times and I'm like okay your name's Fred I got it it's so bad and really embarrassing I'm gonna take the shade marine which is a more chunky kind of glittery color and let's just pop it oh and let's just take the shade mist again on the lower lash line some liquid eyeliner I'm gonna go in with this color pop one we're gonna go pretty dramatic gotta balance out that beautiful blue eyeshadow look. We'll go in with a light blue eyeliner. This one is in the shade Prance by Colourpop. Oh I love this. Look how beautiful that actually is. Okay even though this mascara is like dried out whatever we're just gonna smash some of this on. We get some on our eyelids it doesn't really matter. I'm not really trying to get it on there but half the time I do when I'm doing my makeup. There's a speck. That's actually easy to photoshop out. I've definitely done that in pictures before when I've like oops accidentally got mascara on my eyelid and not noticed. I don't mind doing that kind of editing because it distracts from the look. It's not necessarily changing the image a whole lot. It's literally just like touching it up. I've definitely gone onto my makeup images and boosted saturation when the camera has not captured the colors properly or like adjusted the color balance of the image if the colors look a little bit too warm or too cool or too green or something. Let's see how far we can take this today. And we are gonna stick on some lashes. I'm just gonna use some I've already used before. I don't have a clue which ones these are. I'm pretty sure they have like Huda Beauty. For my highlight blush and like bronzer I guess I'm going to use this palette right here. I'm using the like kind of bronzer shade and I'm just going to smash some of that on my cheeks. And then I'm going to take the same brush into I might do this one this like pinky color. And then I'm going to use the shade Extra Credit right here to highlight my cheeks. Doesn't matter if it's not very blinding. We can always edit it if we want it blinding. I'm going to take this lip pencil in Oak by MAC. And on top I'm going to take this really pale, like, pinky, nerdy colour. This is called Rescue Me by XOBD. Actual serious side note, half of all of the profits of this lipstick go straight to Hoo-Ha, which is an animal charity here in New Zealand. So if you want to purchase it, you can support that cause as well. Alright, now let's go have a quick photo shoot. So I just sat down in my lounge with my little phone holder thing and I decided to use my Huawei because the camera is way better and it shows more detail. The iPhone made the makeup look good already so I needed some more high quality pics, you know? So after a few poses, I finally got the one. We start with this one here. So first, I don't really know where to start. It's funny because my skin actually looks pretty good like you can see there's a little bit of patchiness and everything but you can't really see the cakiness so much because I guess the lighting was kind of good. The eyebrows definitely look patchy but first of all we're going to go into the reshape tool and just squash those down a little bit. I think this is what Brittany did so I'm just basically copying her at this stage. This one definitely needs a lot more work so I'm just gonna go ahead and thin them out a little. You can see that before and after. Holy. Okay, so I'm gonna accept that and I'm gonna go back into the tool one more time and just fine tune it a little because there's still a few little lumpy bumps. Alright, so you can see we've got a little bit of um, patchiness throughout this eyebrow. So I'm gonna go into the paint tool and just take some of that and go into the tone. I think this is what people actually use to create eyeshadow looks as well. You can like adjust this to see how much you want. Like I just feel like it looks a little bit tidier like that. Maybe I'm just gonna go into the retouch tool and just smooth through this front part just a little bit. Just so they look a little bit less harsh. You can see how they just look a little bit softer now. I'm actually just going to pause. I'm going to save that to my camera roll. I'm going to import it into Perfect 365 and this is something I've actually had to do a small handful of times. You want to go into Photo Makeup. You can import your photo and it's going to like chuck on makeup. This is creepy as heck and it's like smoothed me. Can you see that before and after? So we're going to go down the bottom it says Original. We're going to click Original. So this is just the original photo of course and this is something I've had to do a small handful of times when perhaps like I've got a bit of bounce back from a flash or if I just look washed out in the sun or whatever. So now what I'm going to do is go into the tools toolbar and which it's the foundation one and this is where you can kind of like touch up 
the way the foundation looks like in terms of the color so for me like I obviously want to make it just a slight bit darker it didn't actually look too bad in the photo can you see how like my face is changing hopefully you can see that on camera actually it's changing my chest color too so I'm just like picking one <laughs> literally you can choose any skin color which is a little bit terrible so this is gonna help even out all of that terrible patchiness just a little bit I guess we'll just go for like that you can see the before and after it's just a slight little touch up when I put my finger on my screen very subtle but still there that's actually kind of airbrush the photo as well so we'll save it that then we can go straight back into it on facetune so let's fix this in a corner I'm just using the patch tool which is what I use like if I've got a big pimple or something and I'm just gonna like attempt to <laughs> fix this this is like the challenging part I think and then I'm gonna go back in to that reshape tool and then kind of refine that edge as well and maybe just like is this weird this eyebrow's really bothering me how it's like blatantly just like it's drawn on terribly whereas the other side looks kind of okay so let's take this patch tool and just select the inner part of the eyebrow I'm gonna flip it and then you can kind of like rotate it and just soften it like that let's have a look at the before and after holy my skin looks way too airbrushed with that filter on but hey it did its job i guess i'm going to go back in with that paint tool you can see around my jaw there's like some really dark contoured areas from where i put way too much contour so i'm gonna take my selection tool and the tone and i'm gonna try to like brighten that a little bit See, I just don't think photos look good when they're like overly airbrushed. I try not to do that to my photos. I think I used to do it more back in the day when I didn't really know what I was doing. Let's soften these colors. I'm gonna like bring out that contour a little bit and then I'm gonna go back in it to the retouch smooth and then just like soften the edges. And if I just like show you the before and after, you can see it just doesn't look as like patchy I guess. Okay what else needs to be fixed? I guess this blue eyeshadow. So I'm gonna go back into the tone and just scroll through the colors and we'll go in with like a really light kind of bluish color and I feel like we just needed to blend that blue up a bit. So I'm going to apply the color. <laughs> this is so weird. Now I'm gonna go back in with a darker blue. I'm going back in to the paint tool and we'll take like the darkest kind of colors and just tone that in as well I'm like putting this underneath too just to try and like balance it and then going in with that erase I'm just gonna like fine-tune the edge and then pull it down a little bit so it looks softer I don't even know if that looks better to be honest this is actually really hard like people that face tune their makeup on that's a whole nother skill in itself and I honestly don't think there's anything wrong with it if people disclose it do you know what I mean like it's kind of shit when people are like trying to oops create this unattainable makeup because they think you know if this person can do it so can I but then it's literally like digitally applied I'm gonna just thin out this eyebrow from the underneath side this is another reason I don't think it's like very healthy to overly photoshop your photos because you get this distorted image of like what you're actually supposed to look like as well and you could keep going forever like it would be so easy just to get so carried away and not know when to stop okay now i'm going to go in with a tool on here it's called the touch up tool and i'm gonna go over to the eyebrow area and just pull that up a little bit sometimes i do use this if my eyebrows look a bit washed out by the sunlight just darkens them a little bit and the lip one this can just kind of make your lips look glossier or more matte. So I'm going to add, I guess, a more glossy finish. Does that look weird? You can also do it like on the rest of your face. I don't really like the way it looks. So we'll just kind of leave it alone. I'm going to go into the face tool. Now this is the creepy stuff. Look at this. Look how awful that is. You can like adjust, ah! you can adjust your face. Um, what else can you do? You can adjust your eyes, nose, eyebrows. What can we do with these? Ooh, okay, so let me pull it down a little bit just to make them a bit thinner again. Oh my god, that's so creepy. Let's make that eyeliner pop. I'm gonna tilt my eyes a little bit. I'm like going against everything I know to like not overly photoshop this. It's like difficult. I'm just gonna like photoshop out the scar I have. 
between my boobs. All right, now you can barely see any highlighter, so this is something I do see people do very frequently. I'm gonna take the paint tool and we'll take like a really pale color. So you can do it like intense, which I think looks silly. So we'll do it like less. And then I'm gonna like tap my finger over the erase tool. Just tapping out over that other side as well. I don't usually take photos of myself on this kind of angle either, so this is throwing me off even more. Oh my God. I just hate the way this looks. The intense Photoshop just looks terrible as well. Do you know what I mean? So Brittany do this one where you like pull it down to make your neck look longer. <laughs> All right, now let's crop it a little. Now let's go into the retouch bar and we're gonna go into detail tab and just make my eyes pop a little. This is something I do sometimes if I just wanna like add a bit of like intensity to certain areas of the photo. I just realized we've got this really dark mark next to our eyebrow where this like bronzer is right here. So I'm gonna use the patch tool once again and just, I don't know, improve it a little bit. I feel like this looks strange. Going back into the retouch tool, let's go into the black and white, just to black and white all of it that background. And then I'm gonna go in with the eraser tool and just go around the edges. See on my hand here? Just going to erase over my hair. If you don't want it to be like bluish, you can just like drag it down a little bit. So I'm gonna, yeah, probably do it about here. And then save that to camera roll. And now I'm gonna show you guys one of my favorite apps to edit. It is called a color story. I'm gonna go into tools. So I really love this because it's kind of like Photoshop. You've got your curves and you can like adjust all of the contrast and everything. So I'm gonna pull up the contrast a little bit. You can also go into each color, red, green, blue, and you can like change all of the color balances like that. So I'm just gonna like pull a bit there. I just like don't even know what I'm doing half the time. I just play around until like it looks quite cool. So like here's the before and after of that. And there's all sorts of different tools. So yeah, that's what I like to do to kind of correct the color. Also, you can go into this little tab here and correct each color individually as well, which is really handy. For example, like make the blue way more saturated here. You can change like the actual tone of that blue, which is kind of cool. I'm just like looking at it on my computer screen right now because my phone's overheating and it's gone all dark. So I'm like <laughs> doing it via my computer. But can you see how much better that looks? So then there's also filters. You can save your own. So I've got some saved like they're all just called random things. I've just like made my own presets, I guess. Like this is one of my favorite ones. Kind of crazy, like in this photo, I look airbrushed, freshly photoshopped. And when you look at how I look right here, it's pretty crazy, like the difference. And there's a bunch of other filters that I've got on here too. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So let's save that. And I just wanna pop it again into Facetune. I just need to soften up some of this eye makeup once again. So I'm gonna go in with a skin tone color and just go over the edge of that eye makeup. Once again, we can like pull down that a little bit and then just kind of fine tune it. I think you're gonna be surprised when I actually show you like the before and after. Let's go back into the reshape and puff out my hair a little bit. Give me some volume. Look at that difference. Does that look better or worse? I'm not too sure. <laughs> and then it looks like I've got some foundation in my hairline. Let's cover that up while we're at it. You can see the difference in my hairline. So I'm going to put the before and after up on the screen now. As you can see, there is a massive, massive difference. I feel like most of it just ended up being smoothing that bronzer out and fixing up the eye makeup a little bit. Fixing up those eyebrows was a major. Adding in some highlighter, fixing up the lip color a little bit, adding like that kind of different finish and adjusting all the colors and everything it made the lips look way less harsh than they look in real life with the dark unblended liner. Even my nose looks slimmer just from applying the highlighter kind of color on it. Fixing my angles so like you know stuff like my shoulder when I push that down it's something I could have done by posing but there you go. Fixing the background, contrast, smoothing out my skin, adjusting the actual color of the foundation. That inner corner was such a major one as well. Fixing that and sharpening up the eye makeup just making it look more structured fixing like the sharpness of the actual eyeshadow on the edges and then even just like fixing my hair and giving more volume I don't know if that actually looks better or worse you guys let me know what do you think of this like what is your opinion on it face tuning and photoshopping how much is too much how much should be disclosed I would love to learn from you guys too like I said I like to fix any big breakouts I have for example if this was showing in the photo I would for sure edit that out it literally looks like a third nipple is growing on my neck if I 
I have big pimples on my chin, you know, I'll sometimes edit them out. I mean, you can look through my feed. Sometimes I have pimples on my face still, like sometimes I can't be bothered editing the picture. Like for example, this photo I've got on my page right here. This one I didn't really bother editing too much at all. It's mostly just a filter with a bit of a grain on it. You can still see when you zoom all the way in, you can see my dry lips. You can see some little texture on it, my forehead, a pimple on my cheekbone. But I still think the photo itself looks stunning. Do you know what I mean? Like I just don't think there is a need to look perfectly perfect. And at the end of the day, if I can get my makeup looking perfect in real life, then it's gonna look more or less perfect in photos as well. This photo here is just a case of amazing lighting where my skin literally looks so perfect. I actually really like this photo. It was straight after I got a fresh brow tint, so my brows are looking real dark, but I kind of dig the look. So yeah, hit me up. Let me know what you guys think about face tuning and photoshopping and everything. I hope this video brought a little bit of awareness to you guys, showing you that everything on Instagram is not necessarily how it seems. There are millions of beautiful people on Instagram that don't over edit their pictures, so don't think I'm just trying to call out everyone on the planet for photoshopping or something like that. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying a lot of people on Instagram that do face tune, photoshop, with Within an inch of an image's life. It's not all what you think it is. So it's so important for you guys not to compare yourself to everyone on social media. I'm going to link a few people down below who I love to follow that make me feel really good about my body and are really, really like just honest people with their images and body confident and stuff like that. So please check the down bar and go chuck them a follow. Say that I sent you on one of their latest pictures and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.